on board airline tonight. We've got love. Hopefully, she'll say yes. We've got sweat. <laughs> and tears. I feel like I'm an old lady, you know? Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. If you can use some exotic booze, there's a bar in Far Bombay. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly away. Aberdeen. And a class of Scottish school children are set to receive some very exciting news about a trip to see their pen pals. We know it's a long way away. How many miles? 500. 500 miles is too long to go on a bus. We would be far too, too tired. tired and too grumpy. But we wouldn't be tired and we wouldn't be grumpy if we could get there very quickly on an aeroplane. <gasps> now, would that be possible? Yeah. yeah. Lots and lots of money. No. Lots and lots of money. Well, will I let you into a secret? Yeah. We are going. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. So, we have to get up really early. We have to come to Don Bank. We have got to get on a bus. We've got to go to the airport. For seven-year-old Daniel, it's too good to be true. And I spoke to the lady at the airport and she said she's going to make special arrangements for John. Because I told her that we had a person in a wheelchair and she said, that's not a bother, we can manage that. It may be 9.30 in the morning, but for a group of lads jetting off to Spain, the party begins in the airport bar. Basically, we're on rugby tour. Uh, we're going to have a good time, plenty of beer, plenty of uh, messing about. Uh, if we hit lucky, join the Mile High Club. That could be a very, very lively flight. I do not envy the camera crew at all on that one. <laughs> Fifteen beer-soaked lads heading off to Barcelona, and it's a two-and-a-half-hour flight. Class 3 Donbank Primary are jetting down to Luton to meet their pen pals at a private school in Hertfordshire. The trip has been arranged by teacher Marilyn Grant. The two places are very, very different indeed. Their school is set in the middle of the English countryside, whereas ours is in a housing scheme in Aberdeen. Um, the children that go to that school are terribly different from ours. But again, when two lots of children meet together, that, those kind of things don't matter. But nerves are mounting for one little boy and his dad. He uh, just told us on Friday that he's scared of heights. Yeah? So we're trying to explain that you don't actually feel the sensation of heights when you're up in the plane. So we took him out to the airport on Sunday night and he seems to have calmed down a bit now. Yeah? Hopefully. <laughs> Stewardess Janie Stock has just 20 minutes to prepare the plane for the kids, but she'd rather not. People who eat Murray mints, opal fruits, or have children under the age of 16 should not be boarded at all. So they leave the sweetie wrappers in the pocket, you see, <laughs> and children are hard work. Yes, 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 yes. Oh. 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 Look at the pirate! 
The kids are desperate to board the plane, but like all wheelchair passengers, Johnny gets on first. 500 miles away in Luton, there's anticipation of a different kind. Today is going to be the most nerve-wracking day of my life ever. Um, basically, I'm planning to propose to my girlfriend at the airport in front of everybody. We've been going out for only about three and a half, four months, and everything feels fine and it just seems right. So I've got the ring tucked away in my pocket, and hopefully she'll say yes. Mark's girlfriend, Heather, is an EasyJet stewardess due in shortly on a flight from Belfast. As usual, taking control of organisation and logistics is supervisor Jane Bolton. Oh, hello. 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 Let me see the ring. Oh, the oh ring. my God. Do you want to hold them? Yeah. I'll show you the ring. It's exciting. <laughs> You're all right. Oh, that's lovely. You're nervous. Half my weight on. I'm scared stiff. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold your hands for you. You will. Well, then go for that. I will. Is that all the little persons now? Don't take the tables down yet. Let's get the seat belts first. Boys, leave everything. Everyone strapped in in time for takeoff. Daniel's beside himself with excitement. Grant's gritting his teeth. <laughs> Back with the other children, the drinks trolley is doing a roaring trade. We've got no beer left, I'm afraid. Okay, Bacardi, vodka, gin, brandy, and whiskey. Good name, Dan Daniels. We're having a couple of ales. We are. We are. And uh, which way is east? We had a couple of smokes on the way as well. Hey, we haven't said four. We did. <laughs> we did. We did. <laughs> Apparently, on this flight, you're not allowed to drink your own alcohol. We had a couple of bottles of Jack Daniels, and the stewardesses were straight down on us like a bunch of hawks, taking us straight off us, and. Uh, S selling their alcohol at exorbitant prices, I mean, obviously a nice little money earner for them. But as the alcohol flows, the cabin crew look set for some turbulence. Did you like the takeoff? Was that good? Did you feel it rumbling along? It gets really fast, doesn't it? It's great. Well above the clouds now. Would you like to go up to the front? See the pilots, would you? Yeah? Even Jane is taking a shine to the kids. Almost 500 miles per hour if you're in your car. Whoa, it's cool. You've got to look at it. Keep your hands on the thing. You have a look out the window. It's a very good view of Scotland. It's not, they're very well behaved children, surprisingly enough. They are very well behaved indeed, very excitable, you know. In Luton, there's a welcoming party. It's like the first time we've seen someone from a different country. <laughs> and it's just like, it's so exciting. The booze is beginning to take its toll and the crew are concerned for the other passengers. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. 
As the plane comes into land, Grant's feeling sick. She feels sick. She's just been sick. But one of his classmates beats him to it. At least the kids managed to get it in the bag. Elsewhere, the aim hasn't been so good. Jerry's doing the jobs that uh, he considers even too kind of ill for us to do. His friend here's been ill, so he's taken it upon himself to clean up the mess that he's made. And here's the guilty party. I've never actually had a passenger offer to clean up the firm a mess before. No. I like to do my business. Yeah, he's actually uh, he's a good guy. Jerry, thank you so much. Really appreciate it, mate. Come down and get washed off down the back of this. That's an invitation for you, Jerry. Well done, Jerry. Back in Liverpool, it's not booze but fags that are causing problems for Kevin. No, sir, oh, oh. no smoking. No, no, no fume apart. You just wait here, please, if you want. Can you wait here, please? We've got an aircraft starting up, you see. Okay. I told them. Where? No cigarette. I've just told that fella not to smoke and he's lit it up. That blow before that you just told to put it out. People are getting off the aircraft and they're smoking. We, they could blow everybody up, it's ridiculous. It's obviously common sense that when you're walking across a tarmac where there's fuel spillage that you do not smoke. And they're actually told by the cabin, cabin crew on arrival not to smoke until they enter the terminal building. And people just disregard that instruction completely. It's absolutely ridiculous. They're putting their, their lives and our own lives at risk. Crazy, irresponsible. Right, Thanks a lot. Thanks for right, the other way back. Thank you. Good luck with your footy. Yes, yes, yes. Ta In Barcelona, the boys have left their mark. It was supposed to have been cleaned up by a colleague of the rugby lad that spewed all over the place, and he didn't quite get it all, if you can see. It's a nice, nice bit here. It's all on there. I don't know what he's been eating as well. That's disgusting. That's, I hope it's sick. I hope it's sick. <laughs> But nothing's too much for the Spanish cleaners. They have a little known cleaning remedy, a can of cola. But it hasn't solved the problem of the smell. <laughs> it's the big moment for Mark and his marriage proposal. She's here. His stewardess girlfriend Heather is on the inbound flight from Belfast. Oh my God! Where have I got to stand at the I'm front? I'm so excited. It's not even me. It's Mark's big moment. Hello. Hello. I ring. I got asked properly. I could get down <laughs> on my right knee, which is very weak. <laughs> so, will you bury me, please? Yes. yes. I'll put this on your finger. No, the flowers. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, they're from Mark, obviously. <laughs> but this is from EasyJet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you. Very proud I'm of you. I feel scared. <laughs> Thanks for all your help, then. That's the right. Yeah. No problem. Cheers. Very sentimental. It's not like me at all. <laughs> I actually had a tear then. That's really not like me. Oh, that's lovely. Okay. Happy ending. Right. Bye. <laughs> A few stolen moments together and Heather's jetting off to Madrid. Not even the course of true love can be allowed to delay the EasyJet half-hour turnaround. Jane's happy to play Cupid, but she's not so lucky in love herself. I've been single now for about four or five months now. Yeah. 
I'm getting on now. My mum's giving up. My mum thinks I'm ever going to get married. She gave me the money that was, she was saving for my wedding to get a car when I went home a few months ago. <laughs> that's sad, isn't it, when you're nearly 29 and your mum's giving up on you. I'm very fussy, really fussy. Can't stand anyone that rings at me. I like a chase. I like, well, normally, tall and dark, but it's quite a nice builder that's been in that's bald, so. An exciting moment for the kids, and for Miss Grant, an emotional reunion with her opposite number, an old friend from Scotland. Wow! This is Pippa. This is Daniel. This is Pippa. Where's Daniel? Daniel Eiselman. Right, there you are. Yes. Yes. Rebecca? Go on, Rebecca. Yes. 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 Different schools, another country. But Daniel still knows how to impress the ladies. How many teeth have you lost? Yeah. How many teeth have you lost? Oh, heaps. I've only got 94 left. I've lost, let's see. I've got I've, I've lost, I've lost 50. Set of pen pals are becoming inseparable. And the love bug has spread to check in, where Katrina's been dealing with two honeymooners. I to take my guitar with me on, onto the plane. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Maybe you can serenade your wife. Well, that's a good idea, yeah. Would you get your guitar on that then, please? Oh, do you want to you want to hold it? Or? No, I want you to play it. It's called Chloe. Oh, Chloe. When you gonna look my way, Chloe? When you gonna look my way? Oh, Chloe! When you gonna look my way, Chloe? When you gonna look my way, Chloe? When you gonna look my way, Chloe? When you gonna look I wish Julian would sing to me like that. <laughs> he only sings in the bar. Right. <laughs> okay, well, you're, oh, I'm afraid you missed your flight. <laughs> they haven't really missed your flight. Um, you're boarding on time and it will be in 10 minutes from gate 11. Gate 11. All right. All right. Have nice a lovely time. I think quite a nice couple. Two peas in a pod. Quite merry. This is my wife, Chloe, and I wrote the song. Actually, I wrote the song about a girl called Susie, but then when I met Chloe, I just had to change the name because oh, she just wooed me. And uh, look out for it, it's gonna be it's gonna be number one. Thanks, bye-bye. My oh my, I sit and gaze and wonder. Someone can be as lovely as you. We just had a lady that's rang into the office, filter at the call, and uh, <laughs> she said, I want this poem read out over the tunnel to my boyfriend when he gets here. Obviously, we can't do that. And she was told that, and of course, you know, what do you want us to do? She said, oh, I'd like you to take down the poem and read it to him. Of course, well, I'm not reading it to him, but we'll write it down for you. So I've written it down. Do you want to, do you want to hear it? I'm sorry I said the wrong words at the right time. It is the adventure of our love. Not smooth, is it? Because it's true and real, but I know it is fiery but pure with passion. Whatever it is, I do miss you and you invade my mind every second of the day. As long as I live, my heart will never change for you. You are my first and my last. I need you and want to be with you today, tomorrow, edge of our old age and beyond eternity going through side by side. I'm sorry if someone gave me that, I'd have to be sick. <laughs> Two, two love stories we've had today now, isn't it? <laughs> and they say things come in threes. Daniel, mm -hmm. I love you. 
Parting is such sweet sorrow. At Luton, Katrina's feeling the strain. It's only a few weeks since she returned to work following her treatment for cancer. I am so tired, I tell you, this has really washed me out. I'm a little bit upset at the moment because a passenger commented on my hair and it wasn't a very nice comment. Upset me. It's just the passengers, you know, obviously some of them are quite rude and um, she's been away from it for so long. It isn't very nice and you, you do get, you don't get, you're not used to it anymore, which she is, and, and it upsets her, obviously. I really don't like it, short. I feel like I'm an old lady, you know? I'm quite an outgoing sort of person and, you know, I've always been into the fashion and I really feel that my hair's a dated style because I can't have it cut, really, and truthfully, because at the end of the day, to have it cut would mean that I'm going to get more layers in it and then, you know, I can't grow it so quick, can I? I'm really sensitive over it, but I mean, everyone's really nice here. They always say, oh, I prefer your hair short, it's lovely and all that, but it's how I feel. I don't like it. And when that woman told me she didn't like it either, it upset me. <laughs> the problem is, I keep my ID like that. That is me, that is to give me an incentive to say, I'm going to get my hair that length again. And because she saw my ID and said, oh, I don't like your hair cut, why did you have it cut? And, you know, it just... She's tired, bless her. It's really taken it out of her. You know. She's a little fighter. She says, oh, I'm all right, I'm all right all the time. But you can see that she's tired. and. Uh, I'm quite close to her, so I worry about her quite a lot, really. You're travelling to Athens? Yeah, he's at check-in now. He's just checked his bags. Athens? Can I check in, please? Okay. Do you have your Thank passport, you. please? Thanks, bye. Thank you. And I've got a reservation here. That's all right. OK. S24DAG. That's great, thanks. Bye. Do you have any bags today, please? Yeah, I have. I've got one. Yeah, we've got enough yeah. scales for me. Just a little. Twenty-one children, three adults. And finally, the kids prepare for the journey home. It's been absolutely magic. Wonderful day. I have taught young children for 27 years and I don't think there's ever been such a wonderful day in the whole of my teaching career as we have had today. Brilliant. Mark and Heather are set to marry in April. Jane handed over that poem to a man who preferred to remain anonymous. And letters between Aberdeen and Hertfordshire are at an all-time high. Next week, Jane takes the flak. Don't need to point at me, sir. And Katrina awaits the results of her cancer scan.